So the other morning I rewatched Chappie for some reason on my tiny ass laptop screen like a fucking loser. Uh, I got roughly the same experience as when I watched it for the first time on the 3rd of March in 2016. Yeah, I was making a list of all the films I watched before I got Letterboxd because I'm just that cool. But anyway, my overall thesis on both of these viewings was that Chappie as a character, is simply amazing. Such a charming and adorable little robot who consistently captivates as he develops. But no matter how attached I was to this specific character, pretty much every other aspect of this film annoyed the hell out of me. Now, don't get me wrong, there are quite a few scenes that I would label as great. Not just because Chappie is the center of attention in them, but because they're crafted pretty damn well. It creates quite the contrast because the film not only switches between tones way too abruptly, but also jumps from a scene that feels masterful to a scene that is laughably bad. This city belongs to me! Cinematography. Why even bother? <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna go with a more in-depth approach with this next example. We get a pretty terrifying and emotional scene in which a bunch of ghetto hood rats abuse Chappie. It pulls at the heartstrings because Chappie is still learning and discovering the world. He's in the early stages of growing like a human, albeit at a faster pace, but there is always a very humane touch to the whole development of the character. It calls back to the previously established concept of youthful innocence and harmless nature making this tragedy feel even more... tragic. It was so powerful in fact that it even reminded me of some truly awful real life events, in which Ghetto Hood Rats abused a disabled person. God, I hate this world. But I digress. All in all, it's a well-crafted scene in pretty much all aspects. The soundtrack complements the punch of the scene, the camera work is well handled, and even the slow motion is utilized in an appropriate and effective manner unlike earlier in the film. So that was a scene that I would call great. And that scene is followed by this bullshit. Oh no. A very important scene in which Dion throws random objects off the table to illustrate his anger. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to tell that he was indeed angry. The cute little robot is just like, oh for fuck's sake, he's off his autism meds again and he's acting up. Dion then receives a phone call where some guy tells him that they realize the guard key has been signed off. This is of course cut together in a very ADHD infused manner. Or maybe the actor was so shit that it simply had to be edited in this obnoxious and nonsensical way. Which almost completely diffuses the emotions that are attempted to be conveyed here. You're a terrible shitty person! I really hope that no one compares this nonsense to the editing techniques used in Lars von Trier's films because given the context and what's happening in those films, it makes sense. Whereas right here, it just feels forced and doesn't make much sense. In all honesty though, the cute little robot at least makes the scene feel a little bit worthwhile. Miss, miss. So clearly it's a bad scene, but it is very brief, which might make it seem like I'm just nitpicking. However, the placement and order of scenes in a film is very important. Listen up, film students. You know this thing called narrative structure? It actually matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're going with a chronological order or not, but unless your film is deliberately quickly switching between tones to convey a certain meaning, or unless your film is just meant to be trippy and it's not supposed to be all that serious, having a great, emotional scene followed by some distracting and unnecessary bullshit is simply wasteful. And yes, it is unnecessary. Because the whole guard key subplot could have been revealed later and provided more elaborate and intense confrontations and reactions. But anyway, having this messy narrative order, you know, going from great to bullshit to continuing the events of the great scene, unfortunately kind of ruins the film as a whole. Because it is a consistent issue. It makes it a mixed bag of some greatness, but mostly mediocrity and at times, awfulness. With a character as lovable and wonderfully executed as Chappie, this could have been as great as District 9, but sadly remains as another case of wasted potential seemingly dictated by Sony.
So anyway, as I said, Chappie is a very mixed bag of a film. It'll definitely deliver a lot more for other people. Fans of Die Antwoord, for example, will certainly be pleased, as the host are, of course, as bizarrely entertaining as usual. As well as a little annoying at times, but whatever. And although their music fits in well with some scenes, I felt like they overstepped a bit with advertising their brand throughout the film. Especially with this shot, I mean, come on. But either way, in case I came across sounding too pessimistic in this video, I do recommend watching this film if you haven't seen it. It does include some smart writing in between the childish bullshit, and it's definitely a fun time overall. Besides, I'm pretty sure I made it clear enough that it's worth watching for the character of Chappie alone.